Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, this is Bishop Twan Priestly Flowers, your social media pastor, the proud pastor of the Jesus is the Answer Evangelistic Church of God in Christ Independent. I tell you, it's an honor to come into your homes and your vehicles or in your, at your job or wherever you may be seeing this broadcast. I thank God for you tuning in today and hearing a word from the Lord. And I pray that this word will be a blessing to you. I pray that you will not be the same after God has spoken to you today. And I do honor the only one triune God, eternally existing in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for his son, Jesus the Christ, who came and gave his life that we might be saved. Oh, what a great, great, great mystery. And by faith, I believe it, according to 1 Timothy, amen, 316. Praise God. I want to get into a topic today, and I want to get into it quickly because I know this could be a little extensive. And I pray that if you have pencil and paper or ink pen and paper or your uh, uh, iPad or computer, whatever, you have to take notes and take these scriptures down because I want to educate the body of Christ uh, concerning these black Israelites who are, um, I don't want to say they're attacking the church, but they are, they are, they are really... Uh, very demanding. I put it that way. I, I use that word. They're very demanding. And I want to get right into this. And I pray, dear God, today, this second Sunday of July, I pray that those that are listening, those that hear this telecast, this broadcast, Father God, that these people would hear this word, Lord, and it would transform their lives. I pray that if they've ever asked questions or Anyone would approach them with reasons why they worship and they do what they do. God, I pray that they would have an answer to give. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you because you are the author of confusion. And you're bringing a lot of confusion. You're racking havoc in the earth. And we know that your time is short and you're out doing all you can do because you know yourself that your time is short. But Satan, the Lord rebuke you tonight. We come against you in Jesus' name. We come to educate and to give knowledge to the saints and to all abroad in the name of Jesus. And we pray this gospel would touch somebody's life, that somebody would might be saved, that somebody might be delivered, somebody might be converted. In the name of Jesus, God, just have your way. If I water, Lord, I pray that you give the increase. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, and I love you. Amen, and thank God. And to those of you that are looking at this video, if you really want to support me right now, hands down, I pray that you would like and share this video. If you would like and share this video, this video will go out to the masses. This video will, will go out to so many people that really need to hear this gospel's truth. It will be a blessing. It will be a blessing. Don't be stingy and hold this message to yourself. Praise God. Click that like button over there in the right hand corner of your screen or share this video or do both. Amen. You can also copy and paste when you share and share this as a text message to somebody or you can send it as a group chat, group text. 
share it, share it on Instagram, share it on Snapchat, share it wherever you can, that this message will get out, amen, that people will no longer be intimidated, people will no longer be confused after this message on today. Please like and share, and if you're on uh, YouTube, subscribe, subscribe to this channel, amen. I want you to like, share, and subscribe, praise God. And I pray that this message would reach the masses. Amen. Let's get right into this. We're talking today about keeping the Sabbath. We're going to talk about keeping the Sabbath. There's a lot of confusion in and around the body of Christ concerning the Sabbath day. I've been seeing the Black Israelite religious army. And that's the way they come out. They are. They are an army of men. They come out and surround your whole church on a Sunday morning. And I don't know if you ever watched it on Facebook, but it's really something to see how these men come together. And they surround churches on a Sunday morning. They set up their loudspeakers at the front doors of the church and they yell out scriptures and they be screaming, amen, uh, 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 at the church about worshiping on a Sunday. and keeping the Sabbath, praise God. And I'm telling you, they are very intimidating, very intimidating. And no one really wants to come out and, and confront these guys. Amen. Not even the pastors will come out <laughs> and confront these guys. So the churches just usually call the police, amen, in hopes that the police will chase them off. Praise God. And I remember watching one video and, and, and a deacon came out to confront the black Israelite group. And when they, they hit him up with a bunch of scriptures, I mean, they, they were spitting out scriptures at him. They, amen. And they, they, they hit him up. Amen. They finally, amen, calm down. And they asked this deacon, they said, sir, why do you worship on a Sunday and not on Saturday? Why don't you keep the Sabbath holy? And the deacon brother sadly responded, I really don't know. I really don't know why. Amen. And this is why I felt led to teach this most controversial subject in the body of Christ. Because these black Israelites Amen. These brothers will catch you off guard and they will be yelling a bunch of scriptures at you. And, 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 and mostly they use these scriptures way out of context. I mean, they just be off. They sound right, but it's off as the man on the moon. Just totally out of context. And they will, they will have you standing there confused. Well, amen. <laughs> Amen. But always remember, whenever you have a group focusing on anything other than the, the atoning blood of Jesus Christ as the essential necessity, I'm sorry, necessity for salvation, it is of the devil. We got all kinds of people in the body of Christ. We dwelling on baptisms. We, we dwelling on now Sabbath day. We, we got the seven day Adventists. We got we got people, amen, you got to speak in tongues. And, you know, we got all of these essentials that has nothing to do with the necessity of salvation. And when they dwell on that, I'm here to tell you that is confusion and it is of the devil. Are you hearing me on today? And if you believe it, somebody ought to say amen. These brothers are sent by the devil to make you doubt your salvation Arguing over day. And we're going to talk about the day. We're going to get into this. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna clarify this and we're going to clear it up. Amen. Because nobody's the author of this confusion but the devil. Well, amen, somebody. Somebody type amen in the queue down there. Somebody type amen in the comments. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's get into this. Let's read Matthew chapter 15 uh, verses... Uh, one through 20. Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 20. And it says, 
Then Jesus, I'm sorry, then came to Jesus the scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now, I want you to take note of that. They, they, they transgress the tradition of the elders. For they, they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy mother and thy father, and he that curses his father or his mother, let him die the death. But ye say that you elders, you say, you scribes and Pharisees, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Now y'all didn't they, 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 didn't, they didn't just change up the commandment of God. They have rewritten the commandments of God with their traditions, man-made traditions. And Jesus went on to say, thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. He said, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah's prophesy of you saying, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Let Y'all get an understanding here. Jesus said, I'm going I'm 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 to bring this amen to an understanding. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? You know, <laughs> Jesus didn't care who he offended. And, I, you know, folks are always talking about how sweet Jesus is, and he, he was sweet. But Jesus would really tell you all in a real nice way. And sometimes it wasn't nice. Because one time he went in the temple and whooped everybody out there and turned the tables over. Amen, somebody. And his disciples was worried about the, the Pharisees and how they were offended by what Jesus had just said. In verse 13, Jesus answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. All, all of this stuff is going to be done away with. All these traditions and all of this foolishness they have come up with, it's going to be rooted up. Amen, somebody. Verse 14 says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Verse 15 said, then, then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus says, are ye also without understanding? Is it hard for you to understand? Do not you understand that whosoever uh, uh, enter it in at the uh, of the mouth, goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Simple. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Now here Jesus checked these scribes and Pharisees' unlawful 
tradition. And it wasn't so much that they had dirty, dirty hands. It, it was a ceremony, a mosaic ceremonial law that you, you, you go through, that you wash your hands ceremonial before you eat. And Jesus just showed you how he felt about their ceremonial law about washing hands. And I want you to look at this point. In Israel, there was no disobedient children dishonoring their parents like we see here in America. If a child disobeyed their parent or dishonored their parents in Israel, they would be executed to death. But these scribes and Pharisees have allowed their own man-made traditions to trump the law of God. God said they'd be put to death, but then the scribes and Pharisees then rewrote the law under their tradition and said, no, the child will not be put to death. So what's really going on here with, 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 with these ceremonial laws and, 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 and these laws that were made to govern the nation of Israel? Amen, somebody. Jesus checked them on that. Amen. They were so worried about Jesus' disciples not ceremony washing their hands before they eat, which was uh, Jesus' attitude toward this. It was, it was not that goes into the man that defiles him, but it was with that that comes forth from the mouth that defiles the man. If you believe it, somebody ought to say amen. And here we are in this day and time, we see these black Israelites and seven-day Adventists, just to name a few, they are just like the scribes and Pharisees in Jesus' day, pushing the Mosaic legalistic laws on the church. Well, amen, somebody. Now, I know I'm right. Amen, somebody. Legalism was the form of governance to govern the nation of Israel. First and foremost, what these black Israelites, amen, they need to understand that the Sabbath was a sign between God and Israel. Let me, let me say that again. What these black Israelites need to really come to an understanding that the Sabbath was a sign between God and Israel. Come on, let's read Exodus chapter 31, 12, 13, and 17. If you don't catch it, just write this down. Exodus chapter 31, verse 12, 13, and 17. Verse 12 says, And, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign, listen to this, between me and you throughout all your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. It is a sign between, verse 17 says, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Amen, somebody. Now, reading there, we see that the scripture says, the Sabbath was a sign between God and who? God and who? God and Israel. If you believe it, somebody say amen. This is why we, we, we got to stop so much entertainment in the church. Amen. We, 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 we got we to gotta start coming to church like we're going to a university of learning. If you believe it, somebody say amen. Hosea, Hosea 4, 6, everybody knows Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We have so much entertainment in the church that's, that's very uh, of knowledge going forth in the church. And then the preaching we get now is so much foolishness we, 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 we turn and flips. We putting our hand behind our ear and we humming, amen, 
trying to get a shout or a dance. And, you know, we just got a whole lot of stuff going on. But what should be going on, and that is teaching God's people, giving them knowledge, giving them bread from heaven. Because the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Somebody ought to say amen. Now let's look closely at how you're supposed to really observe the Sabbath day. First of all, let's get this straight. The Sabbath begins Friday sundown and it ends Saturday sundown. Let me say that again because we got it mixed up over here in the Western world. We think it's just Saturday. But the Sabbath begins Friday sundown and it ends Saturday sundown. I know this to be true because my doctor, my dentist, my dentist, my dentist is a Jew. And on, on Fridays, he's rushing. He even, he, even, he even brought in another partner that's a, a, a non-Jew, another doctor that's a non-Jew. Because on Friday, he has to rush out of that office and be done with his work before the sun goes down. He's got to be able to drive from Inglewood, California, all the way to his home and get to the house before the sun goes down. Or else he'll be in violation of the Sabbath. That's on Fridays. Amen, somebody. Let's read Exodus 20 and verse 8. The Bible says, because we're talking about how to really keep the Sabbath. Now, this is what we're dealing with. The Bible says in Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That's number one. We're to keep the Sabbath holy. God hallowed it and he rested. And now the, the children of Israel were to keep the Sabbath and keep it holy. There was not going no uh, play no baseball or no football or, 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 or going to the pool hall or any of that foolishness or going to the dance hall. You were to keep that day holy. Well, somebody ought to say amen. Exodus 35 and 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation, habitations upon the Sabbath day. I don't care how cold it was in the winter. You can't even heat up your house. You couldn't even gather some log and put in a fireplace and light a fire, no matter how cold it is, on the Sabbath. You couldn't even turn the fire on or put fire in a stove back in these days to cook food. You had to prepare your food before Friday and have enough food to eat between Friday sundown and Saturday sundown because you were not allowed to cook. You were not allowed to kindle a fire. You're not allowed to gather sticks. You're not allowed to gather wood. But these folks are talking about keeping the Sabbath. But we, we, we're looking at the Bible way of keeping the Sabbath. Amen, somebody. Exodus 31, 14 says, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever do any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. You could be put to death. Because, listen, Israel was a theocracy. Are you hearing me, black Israelite? Israel was a theocracy. Israel is not like America that have civil law on one side and a religious law on the other side. Amen. Israel was a theocracy. 
which their civil law and their religious law was one in the same. In the United States, there is what you call separation of what? Church and state. So number one, you didn't have the power to execute and enforce, and I'm sorry, and enforce religious laws here in America because there's a separation between church and state. Are you hearing me today? Israel had no such separation of church and state. They were a theocracy. If you believe it, somebody ought to say amen. And listen, the Sabbath day was so stern. I mean, it, it, it had the death penalty attached to it if you disobeyed. It was very stern. That's why I don't know why people want to get caught up in, in, in all this religious and religiosity. You don't even know what you're getting yourself into. Well, amen, somebody. Look here, let's, let's look at Numbers chapter 15, verse 32 and 35. Verse 32 says, the children of Israel were in the wilderness. They found a man, listen to this, gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day. Verse 35, and the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. You see, there's no getting around the death penalty if you broke the Sabbath. And you Negroes are running around here today talking about keep the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath. Why you don't keep the Sabbath? Man, you don't know nothing about keeping the Sabbath. You don't even have no idea the rules on keeping the, the, the truly keeping the Sabbath. If you believe it, somebody ought to say amen. Now I want to go back and look at Jesus' attitude toward the Sabbath. Let's read Mark chapter 2. Let's go to Mark chapter 2. Come on, write these scriptures down. I'm almost done. We, we almost 30 minutes into this, this message. I'm almost done. Let's read Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Listen what it says. And Jesus said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, the Sabbath was made to meet the people's needs and not the people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. And how are they going to subject Jesus to the Sabbath when he's Lord of the Sabbath? He's Lord over the Sabbath. My God, hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, Thank you, Jesus. The Father instituted the Sabbath for a proper time of rest. Listen to me. The Sabbath was instituted by Father God for the proper time of rest. And listen, listen, the coming of the Lord changed. It changed the legal system. If you believe that, come on, somebody ought to say amen. I said the coming of the Lord, it changed the legal system. Oh, my God. It's right here in Jeremiah chapter 31. I know some of you are familiar with this. Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning at verse 31 through 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 34. Come on, let's read together. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Oh, my God. And with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. The children of Israel couldn't even keep the Sabbath. They broke the law. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And y'all want to pick up 
something you ain't got no business even getting yourself involved with. It just don't make sense. And God says, I'm going to make a new covenant with them. Not the same covenant, the table that he, he actually took his finger and wrote the commandments. And the 613 laws attached to the 12 commandments. There's 613 laws attached to the 12. And we sitting up here trying to get involved in something we don't even know anything about. We already established that this was a sign between God and Israel. And now God said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, the children of Israel and the house of Judah. Verse 33 says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make. Now here he, he can explain. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. It's not in a day. It's within you. It's with, within you. It's not on the outside in a day, but it's with, it is with, with it's in thee, said the Lord. He says, I will put my law in their inward part and write it in their heart and will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 34 says, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ changed the legal system. Oh my God. Oh my God. If anybody's confused, it's these Israelites, these black Israelites that are confused. Somebody ought to say amen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take it a, a, a step deeper here. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. Write down this. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Brethren, this is Apostle Paul speaking. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Did you hear that? The same people that's dwelling on Sabbaths and the 613 laws, along with the 12, these same folks that crucified Jesus and nailed him to an old Roman cross, these same people that rejected Jesus, Paul said, my prayer is that Israel would be saved. Verse 2 says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And that's, that's what I was saying. We have to gain knowledge. And God says in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. These black Israelites, they don't have knowledge. They got a zeal, but it's not according to knowledge. They standing out in front of the church. They yelling all kinds of scriptures. They got loudspeakers going. Amen. They spitting. I mean, they be spitting them scriptures out. <laughs> and they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. No, sir. It's not according to knowledge. Your doctrine is mixed up. Your doctrine is off. Somebody ought to say amen. Verse 3 says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now here comes the bombshell right here. Here comes the bombshell. For Christ is the end of the law. Uh-oh. Drop the mic. For Christ, verse 4, Romans chapter 10, verse 1, verse 4 says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. 
Somebody ought to say amen. Jesus is the end of that law. Jesus has become that Sabbath. Jesus fulfilled the law. And I'm not talking about laws you see here. You, you, you go out and get in your car and run a stop sign or run a red light. I'm not talking about that law. I'm not talking about the laws that you go out and you walk in the store and you shoplift. You put something in your pocket without paying for it. That's against the law. I'm not talking about these laws. So let's not get it twisted and let's not be silly. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. It's a belief thing. Somebody ought to type in the cue. It's a belief thing. Somebody ought to type in the comments. It is a belief thing. And you ought to share this video. Come on, click that share button. Somebody click the like button right now. Come on, like and share this video. Come on, like and share this video. This video need to get out because these folks are running around here confusing folks and we scared to confront them and answer their question because we just don't know. Many of us don't know. They're very intimidating. They're loud. They got loud speakers. They got scripture in, the, in their heads and they spit them out. And, and it's very intimidating. We scared to deal with them. But I'm here to tell you, I'll deal with them. Well, amen, somebody. And let me tell you, there may be some, some similarities between the Old Testament uh, 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 and Israel as a nation and the New Testament church, but they are not the same. If you believe it, somebody say amen. They're not the same. They're similarities, but they're not the same. We're not saved by legalism. If you believe that, come on. Somebody say amen. We're not saved by, by legalism. And what these black Israelites don't understand is the theme of salvation in Jesus Christ. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Once you write that down, chapter 2, starting at at verse 8, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, and we're going to read on down to the 10th verse. Come on, let's read. For by grace ye are saved. My God, that, that is the theme of salvation unto Jesus Christ. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9 says, not a worse, lest any man should boast. But now you got to wonder, what works are we talking about here? What works are we talking about? The same legalistic ceremonial laws in those first five books of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, they were written to govern the nation of Israel. They were written to govern the nation of Israel. It was a sign between God and Israel and the house of Judah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Listen now, unto good works. Now, you wasn't saved by works. Unless you can boast, you know. I wash my hands before I eat. I, I keep it the Sabbath. I, I uh, you know, I don't do this and I don't do that. I don't go there. I don't go over there. I don't smoke this. I don't drink that. And when you get through with your whole list, I wonder where did Jesus come in at? I wonder what did he do to come in and save you and deliver you? Somebody ought to say amen. But listen, the Bible did say in verse 10 that we are created unto good works. Even though we're not saved by works, but we also are created, created unto good works. 
That means once we're saved, let our light so shine before man that they may see our good works. That God the Father be glorified, which is in heaven. Coming from Matthew 5 and 16. It's because we're not saved by works. Don't mean that we don't, we don't walk in good works. And a matter of fact, the rest of this verse says that, verse 10 says, we, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We are to walk in good works. Somebody say amen. Listen, Romans 10, 9 says, if thou can... If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe that, somebody say amen. If you confess with your heart and you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Why is it that folks like to complicate and just, just confuse and bring a bunch of confusion to the plan of salvation? Romans 10, 9 is so simple, but, it is, but, it, but it's just not enough for these legalistic folks who complicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Just complicate the gospel. And this is what Paul's problem was. Every time he would go plant a church and leave, man, and go on to the next region and the next city, next country, wherever, and plant another church. Listen, folks, folks get all messed up. They bring in the wrong people teaching. They just let any and everybody start getting up in that pulpit and start preaching and talking and don't know what the heck they're talking about. That's why we got so much chaos going on right now in the church. That's why we got all these, these chief apostle women. That's why we got women calling themselves chief apostles right now today. Just like the church of Galatia, just let any and everybody coming through there and preaching. There we go eating it up and we just believe every word they say. Even though it's against the Bible, we just eat it up. Amen. Amen. Glory. Don't have no discernment than, than Bozo the Clown. Somebody ought to say amen. And look at what Paul told the church of Galatia in Galatians chapter 3. And let's read those first three verses. He said, oh, foolish Galatian, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus had uh, uh, evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Did you get the Holy Ghost by keeping the Sabbath day? Or did you get the Holy Ghost by the hearing of faith? Confused, confused. And verse three says, ye are so foolish, ye fellow Galatians. Having begun in the spirit, ye are now made perfect by the flesh. You started in the spirit. This church was planted in the Holy Ghost and by the Holy Ghost. Now. That you, you, you have gone on for a while. Here, here comes some charlatans in here and then, then preached the law to you and told you, amen, in order to be a, a good Christian, you got to also be a good Jew. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Paul had to come back in and straighten this mess out. He said, how can you that be gone Amen in the spirit are now made perfect by your flesh, by fleshly legalistic laws. And again, I say, 
We are not saved by works of the flesh or legalism. We are saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's read John chapter 6. Come on, I got to get out of here. We're 45 minutes in here. I got, to, I got to be done in 15 minutes. Come on, go with me. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? They wanted to work the works of God. And Jesus answered unto them and said, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Just as simple as that. If you want to work the works of God, it's not about you keeping the Sabbath. It's not about you keeping the 613 laws along with the 12. It's not about the ceremonial laws of washing your hands before you eat. But all you have to do is believe on him which is me whom he has sent. Somebody ought to say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and give your whole heart to him and He and He sh and you shall be saved. Amen. You shall be saved. If you believe that, come on, somebody say amen. Let me tell you something. You don't need a book of do's and don'ts. But when you give your heart to Jesus. He comes to live down on the inside. And the love of the Father is down in your heart. Listen, the world and, and, and the things of this world, amen, it becomes less interesting to you. You don't need nobody to give you no book of do's and no. If you get into this word and you start fall in love with Jesus Christ, you invite him in your heart and the love of God begins to dwell in you, this stuff in the world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It will become less interesting to you. You begin to read the word of God and your affections will begin to change. If you believe it, come on, somebody say amen to the glory of God. Let me close this out. Let's, let's quickly, amen, look at Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. It says, let him that is weak in the faith receive him, but not to doubtful disputations. That means you're going to have some weak and you're going to have some strong, but just receive them, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth only herbs. Verse 3 says, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth judge him that eateth. For God had received them both. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, don't judge me because I don't want to be a vegetarian. Don't judge me because I eat meat. Amen, thank you, Jesus. And it goes on to say in verse four, who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or faileth. Yea, he shall be uphold, for God is able to make him stand. Yes, he is. He's able even right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling. Now unto him who was able to keep you from stumbling. God is able, amen, to uphold you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, let no, he says, now let me read that again. Verse 5 says, one man esteemeth one day above another. Another Amen, esteemeth every day of life. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let me read that again. Amen. One man esteemeth one day above another. Amen. And another man esteemeth every day alike. Hallelujah. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Verse 6 says, He that regarded the day regarded it unto the Lord. 
And he that regarded not the day, not the day, to the Lord he doeth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. God said, let nothing be refused, but let it be received, amen, with thanksgiving. Prayer and thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. And to the argument about why the saints worship on Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. This is the last argument the Israelites, like uh, uh, black Israelites, I say, like to trip you up with. Well, let's read Matthew 28 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. That in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day, somebody typed, in the queue, the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And they came and found the stone rolled away at Jesus' tomb. And the tomb was empty. Hallelujah. And they found that Jesus had rose on the first day of the week. Hallelujah. That's why the, the, the saint. Call Sunday the Lord's day. If you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. And when you read in John chapter 20, Jesus, he had about three different meetings on that same day. He got up, which was the first day of the week. Somebody ought to type in the comments, it was the first day of the week. Say amen. Hallelujah. Then head on over to Acts chapter 2. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, we get Pentecost from Leviticus 23, 5 through 7. Hallelujah. And there, a certain day from the Passover, you number seven Sabbaths. And the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. Amen, seven, seven Sabbaths. Seven times seven is 49. And the morrow after that, the day 49, is the day 50. That's where we get the word Pentecost. Somebody say amen. Pentecost means 50th. Somebody say Pentecost means 50th. Amen. And on the 50th day, hallelujah. And the 50th day was not on Sabbath, Friday, sundown, to Saturday, sundown. It was on the first day of the week. Somebody ought to write that in the comments. It was the first day of the week. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me repeat that. The 50th day. And the 50th day was not on the Sabbath. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, it was on the first day of the week, which was Sunday. Glory, hallelujah. And it was Sunday when the Holy Ghost fell. Now, hallelujah, if Jesus got up on a Sunday and hallelujah, the Holy Ghost, amen, was sent, hallelujah, from the Father on Sunday. Don't send me to hell for churching on Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Again, Romans 14 and 5 says, One man esteemeth one day above another. Amen. And another man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Listen, I am persuaded every day is holy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm persuaded to keep every day holy. Hallelujah. I've got to walk holy every day. I've got to live holy every day. I've got to live holy every day because Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and, 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 and. 
in holiness. Somebody type holiness in the comment. In holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you believe it, somebody say man. Every day is holy because God is holy. Every day is holy because he said to be holy because he is holy every day. If you believe it, somebody say man to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. I've got to be holy. I've got to talk holy. I've got to walk holy on a Monday. I've got to walk holy and live holy on a Tuesday. I've got to live holy and walk holy on a Wednesday, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I've got to walk holy. But Sunday, I'm going to still keep it holy. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Let me quit. Let me quit. I got five minutes. I have five minutes. I got to quit. I got to quit. Listen. Hallelujah. If this message has been a blessing to you, click the like button and hit that share button. Amen. We got to close. Don't let these black Israel uh, Israelites trip you up. Don't let them confuse you. Don't let them intimidate you. That was a sign. The Sabbath was a sign between God and the children of Israel. And then God made a new covenant with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus became our rest. Jesus became our rest. And our rest now lives within us. It's no longer an outward observance of a particular day. But it is our rest that lives within us. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you're listening by way of YouTube, please subscribe, like, and share. I'm asking you, please, to subscribe, like, and share. Amen. And, and, and if you desire prayer, please call 562-208-9149. That number is area code 562 208 9149 if you desire prayer. And if no one answers that phone, please, please leave it on our voicemail. Your prayer request, your name and your phone number that we can call you back because we want to call you back and we want to touch and agree with you. We want to make contact with you. Amen. That number again is area code 562-208-9149. And I ask that you please send us a love offering. Send us a love offering a free will offering. Amen. We need your financial help and support. Listen, you can cash app us at dollar sign, lower casings now, dollar sign, J-I-A-E-M. Or you can zell us from your bank to that same phone number, 562-208-9149. Or you can mail it to our church office, 5904 South San Pedro Street, Los Angeles, California, 9003. Listen, all of this information is going to come back up on the screen. So all you have to do is look out for it, press the pause button, write that information down, and then address it accordingly. We would really appreciate it. Listen, I got two minutes left, and I'm going to get out of here on time. I promised you an hour. Amen. And as I always close out these broadcasts, I always remind you, amen. Don't you be caught dead without Jesus. God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Above him there's no other. Above him there's no other.